Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and the story of today's video newsletter. Well, someone's asked me to talk about the difference between uh, a value stream map and a process map. So. I'm going to add something to that question because that's the way they phrased it. We're going to look at a value stream map versus a process activity map versus process flow diagram. So they're the three we're going to have a look at. Um, all three are different, although I do tend to use these two uh, together. Um, this is about detail, this is about big picture. Um, we'll, we'll take a look now. So the three diagrams. So first of all, let's show you the three diagrams. So first of all, the value stream map. The value stream map um, I'm just going to call it VSM. What does it do? It measures flow time. So it measures the flow time of, of one order. So it's the total flow time for one order to go through your business. Now, here's an example. So there's a picture here. Um, the on the top right hand corner. If you're not familiar with this, on the top right hand corner is the customer asking for the goods. Across the top, then the information flows through planning and through sales and through purchasing. We buy some raw material, and then the box on the top left hand corner here is the supplier. The supplier sends raw material in and then across the bottom there is a raw material conversion and we measure every single moment of that time. Delay time, operation time, inspection time, etc. Yeah, so that's what a value stream map is doing. It is behaving like a customer and there it is in its entirety. Um, probably, I think it's fair to say, I would create one with a team. It could take me anywhere from three to five days to create one of those. Okay, but it's a it's a big picture. It's what your customer experiences when they say, please can I have ten of those? It's all the steps, it's all the time that gets the order at the door. So that's the value stream map. Now the process activity map. So I'm going to shorten this to process activity map. What's this doing? Well, this is an analytical tool. It's an analytical tool, and typically we are down in a much more detailed part of the process. So if we look at the value stream map for a second, we're possibly in just one of those boxes collecting data and we're collecting data at, at a very detailed level down to what happens every minute, every 30 seconds and then we're trying to say what type of activity is it? So the process activity map, it's an analytical tool and there are some um, uh, traditional uh, symbols 
that you might use. Uh, so, triangle, diamond, uh, an O, sort of a D shape. And what these traditional symbols are telling you is what type of activity you just witnessed. So we just spent 30 minutes, sorry, 30 seconds maybe, um, uh, doing some inspection. So this thing, this one is inspection. This one is operation. So in other words, you're transforming the product into the goods that your customer wants. D is delay. And this triangle is storage. The process activity map is a, um, it's a work study tool. When I was uh, 20 years of age, I was taught to be a work study engineer and the process activity map was one of the techniques that we used to use in order to do a what's the current state, how much time do we spend walking, travelling, storing, uh, inspecting etc, how much time do we actually spend adding value operation. You can do a current state and then of course you can look at where the waste is and you can try and simplify the process to make the, the process um, faster and more efficient essentially. So here's an example of one here look and you can see how at the top of the columns you have the um, the symbols and simply as you work your way down the form what you're doing is you're collecting what were you doing at each stage of the operation so if this was in the let's say it was in the dispatch process for example if you were in the dispatch department what are you doing at each stage and what's happening to the product or what's happening to the people. So it's a work study analytical tool at the point of activity in a very detailed level. It is a process activity map and it tells you whether what you're doing is wasteful activity or valuable activity. That's a process activity map. And finally, the process flow. Now the process flow diagram is very straightforward. It's a diagram of a series of events. And it could have some kind of logic embedded upon embedded in it. So for example, if you were kind of this type of thing. If you were making a product and then here you did some kind of inspection. So this is um, this is the make phase. So there's some logic here. Inspection. Does it pass? Yes. Moves on to the next step. Does it uh, not pass? So it's a fail, in which case it returns back to the, the make stage for rework. So a process flow diagram has got logic, it's got yes no gates and pass fail gates and decisions that are being made and things like that. You might also put some important information in there, so like for the make stage you might say that it's a 100 degrees centigrade um, 100 degrees centigrade for four hours so you might put some some work standards in there as well and again it's an analytical tool it's an analytical tool for you to see the logic of what's going on usually in a box from the value stream map I use this a lot in order to problem solve in order to see if we've got lots of variability or adhering to standards. So all of these tools are fantastic tools. You need them at particular times. This would kick things off because the first thing you want to see is what's, what, what is the customer experiencing 
and where is my priority to improve? Once you've done the value stream map and you know your priority to improve, then you can move in and say, well, what is it that I need to improve? If I'm going to improve quality, I would probably use the flow diagram as part of my toolkit. If I want to improve speed, or maybe even, I would probably add in there as well, cost. If I want to improve speed or cost, I'm probably going to use the process activity map. But they are different tools at different times. They're all diagnostic tools, analytical tools. This is a big picture. These two are detailed and they are based on the problem that you've got in front of you. But for the person that asked me that question, hopefully that's, that's answered your point. What is the difference between a value stream map, a process, he called it a process map. I think what he meant was a flow diagram, but I've added in process activity map, process flow diagram. Use these tools, they are fantastic diagnostic techniques. You can make your process flow much quicker because you're measuring the flow time and deciding on how to improve it. You can please your customers and the more you please your customers, the more money you will make. Use the diagrams along with a load of other diagnostic tools and improvement tools to make more money.